surprise hey everybody how you doing it's your girl bunny to all of my returning subscribers hey how you doing and for those of you who are new to the channel welcome kick your feet up as i recap the entire episode of insecure season four episode three entitled low-key thankful i'll give a recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side and my discussion viewpoints at the end that's all coming up next It's Bunny. <laughs> Lawrence is up. It's the morning. And he's going over all of these details of why he deserves a promotion, giving himself a pep talk, laying out all the details of why he should get this promotion. As he's saying that, we hear this loud alarm and we see Condola pop up out of her sleep. And he's just like, how can you have an alarm like that? You know, that would freak me out. And she's explaining to him, look, it's the only way that I can get up. It's the only thing that's going to get me up and Adam out of bed. And they share a little laugh about the alarm and they're having some small pillow talk and they're sharing some kisses. And he's asking her, hey, you know, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? I know your family's not here. Do you have anything planned? If you don't have anything, we can go over to my friend's house. I mean, he makes this Hennessy turkey. It's terrible, but I wouldn't want you to be by yourself. And she says, well, you know, no, I'm actually having this Friendsgiving at my place with a couple of friends. And he's like, wow, you know, I would I would love to come to that. And she's just like, oh, really? Um, well, okay. And I was going to invite you, but I didn't want it to seem too serious. And he's just like, no, I'm excited to go. And they share some more kisses. So we are getting a time frame. It is getting closer and closer to the block party. We see that it is two months before the block party. So this time is just building more tension and it everything is building up. Lawrence goes to his firm and he goes to the front desk and the receptionist says, you know, well, something came up and they had to reschedule and now they're in this meeting. And he's asking her, is everything okay? And she's just like, um, yeah, they just needed to reschedule. And it's this awkward energy of, whoa, something's not right. After getting with his friend and talking with them, he says that he learns that a lot of the investors are pulling out and they're letting a lot of people go, which means to him, no promotion. And his friend is saying, hey, you know, it's pretty bad for everybody right now. I mean, I may seem like I'm doing great, but I haven't sold a house in over a month. And Lawrence is just like, you haven't sold a house in over a month, man. That's pretty bad. So why do you have this Range Rover? He's like, man, to keep up appearances. I can't have this image like I'm doing bad. And that's really interesting because a lot of people love to show face knowing that everything isn't okay. And Lawrence says, you know, it's always something, man. You know, if it's not the relationship that's right, the career is not right. If the career is right, the relationship's not right. It's always a piece missing. And he's telling him, man, you know, hey, hang in there. Things might get better. But in the meantime, he may need to think about upgrading his car and looking for another job critical scene. Molly and Issa are at the grocery store. They're picking up different things for Thanksgiving and Issa's making her little corny jokes about avocados and having a blast, but Molly's just not that into it. It seems like her mind is somewhere else, but they're throwing little details about what's going on in their life and Molly, you know, she's going to her family's house and she's saying, hey, Issa, but you are coming over to the house for dinner, right, to eat the pie because you always come over to eat the pie. She's like, yeah, 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 I'm going to go over there and eat the pie and I'm going to go over and spend some time with my family. And she's talking about how she can't stand and her mom is developing this new blended family with this guy that she's been with. And she's really not feeling it, but she's going to go just to go. Um, Molly is still upset with her father and she just really hasn't come to with letting everything surpass and everything that we learned from the previous season. And Molly is asking Issa, should I invite Andrew? And Issa is just like, well, you know, it's only been about two or three months. And to me, that seems like it's, you know, too soon. You know, don't turn into your old self and scare him away. And Molly takes offense to that. And you can see how there's tension, tension brewing. And she says, well, you know, at least I don't, you know, sleep with men to get toiletries and, and, and drinks and free drinks. And they're insulting each other back and forth. 
And it gets to the point where Molly says, whoa, 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 you know, like, what was that? That was uncalled for. And Issa says, well, you know, yeah, that was uncalled for. You took it too far. And they're explaining to each other that I'm saying this comment because you came for me first. But instead of talking it through, they kind of sweep it under the rug and really don't discuss, hey, why is there tension between us? And Molly says, you know, I don't know what's going on, but for a while it's just it's been off. And they agree but they just keep walking and shopping and they don't really get into it. Lawrence comes over to help Condola with some things that she needs around the house. And as they're talking, you know, they're saying, hey, you look great. You know, I can't wait to have this, this, you know, Friendsgiving and that he can meet her friends. And she's saying, hey, you know, I'm going to go ahead and get dressed. And, you know, my sink is broken. I can't believe that the guy that was scheduled to come over, he was just like, oh, you got a sink sink and I can't fix it. He says, well, you know, I can take a look at it and I can see if I can fix it. And she takes him up on the offer. And when she leaves the room, he's not hesitant to pull up a YouTube video for some help. Molly gets to her family's house and everybody throughout the episode is seeing Instagram stories and feeds what they're doing at home. Tiffany and her hubby, they're flirting, they're sharing hugs, they're patting each other on the butt and having a good time and Molly sees that. Now the brother um, that's still with the girlfriend um, is, is just, he's really happy. The girlfriend, she's pregnant and she's just not too happy about that. She seems as if that she's unsettled with her brother being so happy with this girlfriend being pregnant. Issa and her brother prepare to go out and spend some time with this so-called blended family. And the brother is just like, which twin is which? Like, I can't figure out what's, what's what. And Issa has this funny saying that, you know, Issa is the one with the alopecia. So, you know, hey, that's an easy way for you to remember. And as they walk up to the house, you know, they see that her, her, their, their mother's boo is on a gurney getting ready to go into an ambulance. I'm like, Mom, what's happening? She said, well, girl, he done slipped on some, some loose gravy on the ground. Now we got to go to the ER. But you know what? Come back, y'all, for dinner. And she's like, you know, come back for dinner and we can, we can share some time. But as they're getting into the ambulance, Issa and her brother is just like, we don't like this blended family thing. Let's just go out and have some fun, both of us. And I'm not feeling it. I don't want to see them twins. Molly is still at her parents' house. And she's asking her, hey, is there anybody new in your life? What's going on? And Molly says, well, you know, I do have a new boo. And she shows a picture of her boyfriend. And they're making little jokes, the mother and the brother. And the mom is saying, hey, you know, you need to work on your happiness and think about what makes you happy. And Molly says, you know, well, Issa thought it was a bad idea since we've only been talking to each other for a short period of time. And the mother says, well, you know, do what makes you happy. If you feel like you want everyone to meet him, then that's what it is. And Molly takes this note as if Molly gave her bad advice. Condola and Lawrence, they're now seeing all of the friends. And the friends seem pretty upscale and really posh. And they ask what Lawrence does and talks about where he works. And one of the individuals is a coder and she's familiar with the company. She says, oh, you know, that company's going through a tough time. He's like, yeah, but you know, I'll bounce back. Everything is going to be okay. And Condola takes note of that as if, uh oh, his job is in jeopardy. And the friends make fun of his shirt. And it's just kind of like, you know, he's trying to get along with the friends and share a little laugh. But it doesn't seem like it's really gelling together. Issa and her brother, they go out to eat, but the only con is that the wait is an hour. So Issa texts Molly and says, Thanksgiving is crazy, um, but I'll be kind of late. And Molly seems really disappointed with that and texts back a really blunt, short response saying, do you, girl? And when Issa reads it, it kind of seems really harsh to her and it seems as if her feelings are kind of hurt. As Condola and Lawrence and the rest of her friends are talking, they're sharing some laughs, and he picks up on little details about Condola that's pretty interesting. They're talking about getting married and having fun, and Condola says, you know, that's one aisle that I want, don't want to go down again. I do not want to get married again. And Lawrence is taken back by that, like, wow, she doesn't want to get married. And there's this one drunk friend that's laughing at every little thing, and everybody can tell that she she is past tipsy 
And Lauren says, says, you know, let me let me take a minute. Maybe some of you need a refill or some water. And she's like, oh, you know, I'll come help you. And she follows him into the kitchen. And as they do that, one character is just like, you know, I'm I'm drunk. I'm tipsy, too. But I just express it in a different way. <laughs> So the drunk friend follows Lawrence into the kitchen and says, oh, you know what, you are wonderful. You know, after her husband left her, you know, you have been the person that really has given her what she's needed and that boost of energy is just super great. She needed someone to help her get over that. And he takes note of that, like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm a person that's trying to ramp her up. It's not anything serious because, you know, if a friend is giving you that detail, it's like, that's all the person said about me. You know, there isn't anything more. Issa and her brother, they finally get a seat. They're sitting down. They're talking about memories growing up in bad Thanksgiving and how their father had these embarrassing moments at the dinner table and when his when he brought home a friend or a roommate from school, which was really his boyfriend, the father made really subliminal uh, notes in the prayer. And Lord, let's remember Adam and Eve, Lord, and, and let some people at the table that need to hear it, hear it. And it was just this really embarrassing moment for him. And they're talking about how... Life is just evolving, and through it all, they've enjoyed just their relationship as siblings. When Issa sees the Molly Do You Girl, there's this long period of, wow, I can't believe she said that to me, and it hits her in a certain way. She mentions to her brother that she saw Lawrence and the new girlfriend and the little brother is saying, hey, you know, are you okay with that? Because you guys were together for a very long time. And she says, I'm not going to lie. It felt weird because we were together five years. And the pivotal statement that in this entire episode is, you know, Lawrence was different when I was with him. And he's different with her. It's like he was a guy that had potential. And I stuck with him through the storm. I helped him out through his, his, his dirty phases and trying to be who he wanted to become. And now he's living that. He's successful and he's living that. And I feel that she's reaping all of the benefits of what I was developing and helping him develop when he was me. And that they're having good quality time. And, and I never got to enjoy that with Lawrence, which is really, really deep because, wow, here I am trying to assist in helping the flower bloom, but I didn't get to see it blossom. So that was that. Ooh, that was a very, very interesting scene. But they're having fun with each other as siblings. They're eating. Their food's coming to the table. There's a band that comes to their table, and they are having fun. And Issa is putting things on her Instagram, on her feed, and they are just having a wonderful time as brother and sister. Molly's bigger brother pulls her to the side because he notices the stank attitude that she's had all night with the family. And he's like, look, it's really noticeable that there's this tension with you and dad, but you need to let that go. You need to let go what he did a long time ago. And Molly says, you know, everybody's sitting around acting, you and mama and everybody, like, it's okay that he cheated. Y'all just moving on. Like, I'm not okay with that. And the brother is like, do you not realize that you're saying you're not ready to move on and all this other stuff, but it happened to her. It happened to mama. Like, get over that. Make make the situation right. And he's just like anybody else. You know, he's our dad, but he messed up like everybody else like could do. He's not perfect. And it hits home for Molly and thinking, dang, you know, he is right. I mean, he is a person. And if my mother can say that they worked it out and make it better, why can't I? And the big brother saying, yeah. He made a mistake. They worked it out as a couple and came back together and they're trying to make it right. So stop this. Stop this energy between you and dad and just chill out. Let's play taboo because I've been wanting to play taboo all night long. I don't want you tripping. Just let it go. Forgive him and let's move on and get it together. After a kind of awkward day, Condola is saying, you know, hey, I, my friends really loved you. You kept them laughing. And it's just interesting that you even came to the Friendsgiving because, you know, I didn't even invite you, really. He's like, wait a minute, you know, you 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 told me about the Friendsgiving, you told me to come over. She's like, yeah, but you know, I really didn't ask you, you kind of invited yourself. 
So it's just this awkward, like, whoa, what are you, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, you didn't want me to come? She's like, no, 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 I wanted you to come, but I didn't, I didn't mention anything because I didn't want you to think it was, you know, super serious. And I didn't want there to be pressure on you and just everything like that. And he says, speaking of pressure and status and questions, you know, your friend was right. She's like, well, right about what? Basically, I'm just, you know, a friend with benefits to you. She's like, no, 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 no. You can't believe that. You know, my friend, she was tipsy and she's a mess. And she said, if anybody's asking any questions, you know, it should be me. You know, you and Issa still share these little laughs and giggles and, you know, I'm not a part of that. He says, well, you don't even want to get married. She says, it's only been a year since my divorce. So no, I'm not trying to hop into anything so serious. And Lauren says, are you still getting over your ex? And Condola says, no, it's over. I should be asking you, are you over your ex? You know, I know you left her because she cheated, but have you thought about if she didn't cheat, would y'all still be together? And Lawrence can't even give a response. Issa's asking her brother, so what's been up with you in your personal life? And he's telling her, you know, he just didn't give me what I wanted at the time. And I just had to realize that this is me. This is who I am. And if you can't deal with that, then we don't just, we don't need to be together. And Issa has that moment like, dang, he's right. If nobody can accept you how you are, why are you making all of these changes just to change and make other people happy? That doesn't really seem fair. And after dinner, Issa is taking her brother home and they're talking about how they, even though they missed the dinner with the mom and the twins, maybe they should make a better effort because that is her life. And they're like, nah, I don't like them twins. And Issa is having this final conversation with her brother and her brother is saying, you know, what are you going to do after you drop me off? And she's like, well, you know, I have to go to Molly's and pick up these pies and everything like that. And he's like, well, you know, things in life, if you don't want to do them, you know, people need to realize that if you don't want to do something, we don't have to do them. You know, we, we had a point in our lives to where we don't have to follow this routine. And that's just that we're not where I am in my life. If I don't want to do something, I'm not going to do it. And I don't know anybody in explanation. And her brother is really getting wise and sounding super, super grown because Issa is just like, man, that does make sense. Like, if I don't want to do something, why should I do it? And she sends a text to Molly like, hey, girl, can we, you know, schedule and do this another time? And Molly says, yeah, of course. And you see the disappointment in her face once again. And Molly just brushes it off. And you see that she's trying to make a connection with her dad. She brings him a pie, kind of as this peace offering. Final scene. Lawrence is on his phone viewing everybody's Instagram feed, talking about family, happiness, fun. And he sees that Issa is having a nice little fun dinner with her brother. And he sends to Issa the smiley face. We hear the Maya case of the X song start to play, and we see Issa start to respond. And that is the end of the episode. This boost of energy of, uh-oh, what's going to happen with this? Well, hey, everybody, it's your girl, Bunny. Long time no see, correct? For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you are aware that I did injure my right hand and I'm very limited. And now that I can finally do a little bit more moving around, I wanted to record my synopsis, a little video for you guys. I've been having the photo recaps because it's a little easier for me to edit and editing does take a while. So with that formatting, it helped me a lot, but I wanted to show my face this time concerning my recap and my thoughts about this episode. What I found very interesting is Issa's brother's comments throughout the episode. He seems like he's becoming so sure of himself and Issa is a people pleaser. She's more concerned with how are others going to feel instead of just going all the way in and protecting her future, her insights, her feelings. And every time he mentioned something that had something to do with improving himself, Issa took a step back and gave this look like, hmm, that's right. For example, when she asked him about his ex-boyfriend and why that didn't work and she really liked him and she said, you know, he just had to accept that this is just me. This is where I am 
in my life and he just had to deal with it and he couldn't deal with that and you know Issa took that as wow maybe I need to start behaving that way if I am a little quirky if I am a little weird and a little goofy that's just me I can't keep changing myself for a man for friends for anybody and she really paused and took that in and I love how the writing allowed us to say wow Issa really paused physically to take in what he said he also mentioned closer towards the end of the episode that you know Issa what are you doing after this she says you know I gotta go over to Molly's and get this this pie and when she said it it wasn't this wow I'm going over to my friend's house to get this pie it was kind of like let me go over here and do this because that's what I said I was gonna do and her brother says you know People are gonna to have to realize that you always don't have to do everything that you say you're gonna do. As you get older, you realize, especially as a people pleaser, if I can't do that, if I don't want to, I don't have to make some, up some excuse about why I can't. And once again, Issa took a step back and just like, man, you know, he's right. I really don't have to go over there and pick up this pie. So she sends Molly that text message is like, hey, can we connect some other time? Because she just wasn't into it. And I loved that about this episode. Also, the dynamic between Lawrence and Condola. He's realizing that they get along. They are compatible but there is no passion there. There's nothing that's really connecting them. And compatibility doesn't really mean that you're meant for each other. Learning that she's frowning upon marriage because her divorce only took place a year ago. So she's really not that hype into hopping into something else. And also it's evident that Lawrence just doesn't want a friend with benefits. Um, that he's at a point of his life that he wants something more. And we see that throughout the episode. We see Molly looking at families together, looking at happiness. That's what they allowed us to see throughout this episode is people longing for something and those who are looking at the more settled, chilled lives, and those who weren't married, those who didn't have children, they were happy with just hanging with their family, and they were happy with just being themselves. So we were able to see that throughout the episode. When it comes to Molly, it was finally good to see that her brother says, hey, you're upset about something dad did to mom, but mom forgave him. They're working that out. That's their relationship. And you're heard about something that happened to your mother. Your mother knows this feeling and she's upset about that. And it wasn't some easy pick up and move situation, but accept her decision. And it was good to see Molly finally break down that wall of, okay, let me talk to my dad again. He's human just like everybody else. And that writing allowed us to see that the brother says, hey, he's our dad, but he's still a human being. He made a mistake. He's just like everybody else. And with psychology, it'll show us that kids when it comes to disappointments from their parents are the most hurt in a certain way because children do look at their parents as superheroes so when they don't do things right our whole world comes crumbling down and we forget wow they're human just like the rest of us so a lot of people can't easily move on from that but i i love how the writing allowed us to see that dynamic because molly is a grown woman she's an adult she's not a child but the inner child in her in viewing her parents or their marriage as perfect or what she's trying to seek exactly it wasn't exactly that she had to see her parents for what they were which were human beings also she had to pump the brakes on decisions that other family members were making her brother with the girl with the baby making inappropriate comments saying hey it's not too late to back back out now not seeing that your brother is happy he's fine with what's going on now you're moving into the dynamic of trying to control other people's lives making this picture perfect lie um that's just not happening going back to the character lawrence 
when he's building himself up to talk to his superiors about a promotion at work only to learn that things in his career and the company are changing. He feels like he doesn't have this, this strength to just be his best. It's always something. He makes a comment in saying that if my relationship isn't right, it's my career. If, it, if it's not my career, it's my relationship. It's always something missing. So he hasn't been able to find a balance because things haven't been going great for him in a while, he's just now getting that taste of having some career development and having a good relationship. And now he feels like he's going backwards, which isn't the case, but with your age and what's going on, you do still feel that way sometimes. I love the fact that the writing showed that Lawrence is still seeking for something. Issa is still seeking for something, which comes full circle all the way back around um, and that's something that a lot of people tend to forget that nothing is a straight line in life and you always figure it out as you go and people have their waves of successes and losses uh, Lawrence's friend the fact that he's an adult and he still feels that he needs to keep up on appearances. You haven't sold a house in a month, but you still find the need to purchase a Range Rover, which is not an easy buy. Um, so this is just showing all of these people in all of their phases of life. Not everybody's 100%. Some people are people pleasers. Some people want to appear as perfect. And some people want to act like everything's okay when it's not. Um, so I really love this episode. Some people may feel that this episode was a slow one, but I did not. I thought it was beautiful that at the end of the episode, they play the Maya uh, case of the X or return of the X because it gave this energy of, is there still something there? Is there still something in saying that Issa made a mistake, Lawrence and her broke up, but if that hadn't have happened as Condola asked him, would you still be together? And he sits back in a pause to think about, wow, would we still be together? That's a really, really good question. So it all just goes to show that this episode is showing that you're going to have growing pains. We see Molly and Issa, they are continuing to grow apart. And as I said in the previous recaps, is that um, a good friend of mine a couple of years ago um, was dealing with being severely obese and uh, she has a lot of girlfriends that are friends and I'm the opposite I have a lot of friends that are men so I've always had really chill friendships because that's what I'm used to I grew up with that I'm more comfortable with that um, and she said you know bunny for the longest time I was the fat one of the group when we went out, guys didn't talk to me. It wasn't that attention. Um, I was always laid off of, of work. I could never find anything stable. The minute I lost a lot of weight, the minute I started getting a lot of attention, the minute I got this good job, the dynamic within that circle of women changed. And uh, it's kind of this same dynamic in um, Insecure. Issa was always the friend to Molly that never had it as good as her, never had that career, never had the money. Molly got used to her being that friend down in the dumps. Now that Issa's okay with, you know, really not sweating over the fact that Condola and Lawrence are together. She's really not, she's trying to move forward and Molly has a problem with her not having an issue with that. Molly has an issue that she's not down in the dumps. It's changing her dynamic in the friendship. So I think that it's making her character angry that Issa's not having that hand out saying, help me, or feeling in a slumber uh, again. So it's showing us that Molly has not only control issues, but she has that dynamic of genuinely not finding some type of way to be happy with, for her friend. And that, my friends, is toxic. If you're around people that don't want the best for you, it's a toxic situation. And we see the to toxicity growing in each episode and them growing further and further apart, which we know, which gives us in episode one, that they eventually are not talking. 
with one another. Let me know what you think. Um, I thought this episode was really, really good because it brings on several different topics and situations just within 30 minutes. Blending families, Issa and her brother really not being comfortable with uh, the mother's man and his twins and it, it, it was just it was just a lot that you could really dissect into 20 different things to discuss. Um, let me know what you think. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any post. And also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name. I promise you guys, once my hand is 100%, the videos will be better. I will have a background. I have everything going. Um, but my injury is still, is, I'm still healing. I, I should make a video about my hand and what happened. Um, but a brief overview while I was cooking, I literally cut open my thumb and my ring finger on my right hand um, to the bone. I know it's really, really gross. Um, <laughs> uh, but other than that, you guys uh, stay safe. Do not downplay COVID-19. It's very serious. Make sure that you uh, protect yourself until a pathologist and scientists can figure out how they can help get everything under control, especially the spread. I love you guys. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>